Hello everybody and welcome back to the Dayton and Troy. This is episode number three. Here we are uh, Continuing our work west. I want to say maybe it's north. I don't know uh, But we're moving to the left around the layout and that's usually west I believe because west is to the left on a map. So I'm gonna say we're moving uh, we're moving westward and uh, We're doing we're making some progress first thing that we're working on here is uh, some of the staging which I believe I mentioned in the last episode um that the original track plan where the where the staging was and where these uh, these extra tracks are um, around the back side. I'm trying to look at this uh, track plan here. I think it's the Western Ohio uh, is what it's listed as on the track plan here. Uh, anyway, these were the tracks that ran right through the middle of D Dayton, downtown Dayton, that I moved out of the way. Um, they're just in the way and they really don't serve too much of a purpose aesthetically, I didn't think. Uh, so I moved them behind the backdrop, and they will reappear a little bit west of here, two episodes from now, in Tippecanoe City. Um, so if you go back to episode number one and you pause the video at the very beginning, you can get an overview of the track plan uh, and see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but that was the first thing I was doing, was just moving some of that track out of the way, so I had some room to actually make some of these scenes that we have here that we needed to add. So, uh, continuing our work uh, just outside of uh, downtown Dayton, we are crossing the Mad River, is, is what this is listed as. Uh, so this is the first scene that I wanted to work on, and, and sort of begin to cut into everything else. Um, a little at a time, you can see me doing some more track work here, trying to get these curves to work out just right. Uh, one thing that I always, just one mistake that I'm constantly making with these track plans is I don't leave enough space between uh, these dividing backdrops. Um, that the, the peninsulas that come out, and that'll come into play a little bit later on, but uh, if you're gonna do a model railroad, expand the track plan a little tiny bit. Um, maybe in Photoshop, blow it up a little tiny bit, so that way you have a little bit of space in between your backdrops. Uh, so you have a little bit of wiggle room for like trees and buildings that are gonna clip into the background. Um, that way they don't spill into the, the scene on the other side. You'll, you'll see what I mean uh, pretty soon. Um, but uh, that's something to keep in mind, and I always screw that up. You can see how I'm clipping these buildings here. Uh, into the backdrop, and it's not a big deal because it's staging behind here, but on the peninsula parts, it's really kind of a pain to uh, to do that because you're gonna have the back end of the building popping out into a scene that is supposed to be miles away. Um, but anyway, I wanted to rough in some of these areas here with the Mad River and uh, just start working it, working it out. And um, I don't know if you guys have realized it uh, from the previous episodes or not, I totally left out the uh, North Dayton Freight House. Uh, which is off to the left, just out of, outside of the camera here. It's just, um, we're gonna run into it in just a second here on camera. Uh, but I did that off camera. I, I laid out the whole track plan and everything and just completely left out that, that freight house. Uh, so I did that off camera, but it is there now. So just in case you were wondering and you noticed and suddenly there's more track there than, than was there previously, that is why. Um, and in keeping with my idea of, of sort of super detailing some of these scenes, um, I wanted to do uh, some some work on um, on this backyard here, uh, which I, I put together what ends up being kind of a, a nice scene in, in my opinion, and I'm not too sure when I get to it <laughs> during this time lapse. I think I'm starting on it here, um, but uh, it, it, it does turn out quite nicely. Um, trying to pick out the right trees at first, I was thinking maybe those TB trees because I'm using all other TB assets uh, in terms of like the grasses and shrubs and stuff like that. Uh, but I really don't like the billboard trees for anything that's up close. It really, for me, it does not work at all for model railroad style builds at all. Um, the shrubs I can kind of live with because they're smaller assets and you can kind of like tuck them into corners and stuff like that. Um, but the trees, I got to use the the STRMM trees uh, because they they just look so much better. The 3D 3D trees when you're looking at scenes up close, like on a model railroad, uh, they really just fit the bill. Uh, and what I was doing just there, just now. Uh, was checking the environmental settings for uh, a time of year. So if you don't know, the the TB grasses and and, and uh, shrubs are um, they they are what what do they call that? I can't remember. They change with the seasons. They're seasonal. Um, and this particular asset or these particular assets are seasonal to the point of like each month they're different. Um, so some some of the assets will be flowering um, during certain months, and sometimes they're green, sometimes they're bright green. Uh, so it varies, so I was just kind of going through and trying to find which month uh, I wanted it to be in. And I, I want it to be summertime or springtime, so uh, obviously uh, keep it nice and green, but I wanted to find the right uh, blend of stuff. And I found that some of the assets actually just straight up disappear. So that's something to bear in mind uh, when you're making a new map. 
and you're going to use these assets. Be very picky about what month you choose to, to set your environmental settings to because uh, that will make a difference on what assets you are able to use and which ones you cannot use. Um, Right here, I'm I'm trying to put up the fascia, uh, the layout fascia, so I put some dig holes down and I was trying to think about how I'm going to deal with this river because you don't want to have like the edge of the river like kind of floating in space. Um, so I, I decided to go ahead and do the, the dig holes and, uh, and cut the area out just to see what it was going to look like uh, with the fascia and how I could kind of cut the fascia to fit. Um, this is going to be the only work that I do with dig holes and the fascia, uh, at least for now, for the next few episodes. Um, so <laughs> it's, it actually looks kind of funny. In the next few episodes, they, this is the only area that's kind of like, just kind of floating out in space like this. I don't bother putting in a floor yet or anything like that. That'll all happen at the end. Usually when I'm doing these model railroad style builds, I'll do the whole model railroad room like at the end. I do the build first and then cut in the fascia and use the dig holes and all that kind of stuff. And that's really because it's just such a process to do that and you have to try to figure out how you're gonna, um, you know, curve the fascia around scenes and, and stuff like that. It actually becomes kind of problematic later on, um, but we'll, we'll get there. Uh, at this point, I am uh, starting to populate the area with some, some cars. Um, the feedback from you guys so far has been pretty positive. Um, you know, I did point out that there is some, uh, some mixing of, of eras happening here with some of the vehicles. Um, I did manage to get my hands on some more era specific uh, cars and stuff like that, but they're not going to start making an appearance for a little while yet. So uh, for now, we're going to be using these assets and um, I'll come through towards the end and, and start repopulating and replacing some of these like 1950s looking vehicles and, and other assets with uh, things that are a little bit more period appropriate, um, like 1920s, 1930s type uh, cars and stuff like that. Um, so here I found, <laughs> I was just trying to detail this little scene here because I thought this was kind of fun. Uh, I found some of these animated fish and I can't remember if I kept them in there or not, but I was just like, this is such a bizarre asset to use. Uh, it's just, it's crazy. So I don't know if I put it in there and I left it in there, but I did take a peek at it. Um, but I did want to detail this scene really nicely and, and add some grasses and some rocks. At some point, I think a rock ends up floating in the water and I do fix that some, I don't know when it happened, but... Uh, I noticed it way later on, so if you do notice it during the time lapse here, it has been has been taken care of. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going through adding some of these uh, pond scum assets and some uh, some like reeds and stuff like that. I put a couple fishermen down there, uh, things like that, just to bring a little bit more life to the scene uh, and and try to make the place feel a little bit more lived in and more alive. Even though you know we're dealing with just a model railroad. Um, and uh, getting into the fascia stuff, like I was mentioning earlier, like. This is just a one, I don't know, pixel wide fascia backdrop. Uh, so any trees that cut through here and any buildings that cut through here are gonna pop out on the other side. And I, I really wish that I that I made it a little bit thicker, maybe left like, I don't know, one yellow cube size distance would have been good. Uh, but it is what it is, you know, you just, you make mistakes as you go along and hopefully you remember what you screwed up, you know, come the next time and you try to avoid it. And learn from learn from your mistakes and your errors, but. Uh, that's that's just something worth keeping in mind. Uh, so now this area is uh, labeled as North Dayton on the, on the track plan, and it includes a freight house and uh, just kind of like a little bit of a downtown scene. I didn't want to go uh, too crazy populating it, um, uh, but I do add some details. I did have to modify the track, as you can see here. Uh, I or originally laid out exactly how the track plan had it, uh, and it just doesn't doesn't quite work so I made some modifications to it I think it still serves the same purpose it works it looks aesthetically pleasing and uh, it, it you know it's a little bit more functional in this sort of uh, size build uh, maybe in like an actual HO scale I think this is HO yeah HO scale model railroad you could you know bend some of these curves properly and, and get the the full effect of the original uh, track plan but uh, in, when it comes down to trains we just don't have assets that are gonna fit perfectly into those spaces uh, so we have to kind of modify things here and there. Uh, so again, using some of these JR downtown buildings to populate our main strip here. Uh, a lot of these sort of downtown, and I say that with air quotes, uh, these downtown scenes are are not labeled as very like dense, uh, densely populated scenes on the on the track plan. Um, looking at it right now, and North Dayton has maybe five buildings uh, that that are on Main Street. So I ended up adding a little bit more to sort of fill the space. 
Um, I think that this is supposed to look like a totally different area, maybe miles away. Uh, well, I guess it's Dayton and North Dayton. It can't be too far away, but uh, I did want it to have a feel that it wasn't exactly the same part as, uh, as our, our previous episodes build. Um, so just going through and I'm adding some of these cobblestone textures for the road and uh, just trying to blend in with uh, the Tume uh, asphalt textures and just trying to figure out how I can kind of make this scene work. The funny thing with some of these model railroad builds is that you, you have to try to do a lot in a small amount of space and certain things don't really feel right like the way that roads flow or like you know where buildings are placed and uh, you know things kind of start and end really abruptly so you have to really think about how you're gonna blend some of these scenes together and make them actually feel like they flow properly um, when they really can be kind of disjointed in some in some cases uh, and this is this is one of those instances where uh, it took a little bit of time for me to figure out how I was gonna make this work I added in this street here and um, just tried to make it feel like another I don't know adjacent industrial area um, just kind of picturing this as I guess a little bit more industrial. I don't know what these buildings would be in terms of like what their purpose is that they would serve, uh, but maybe some kind of mills or factories or something like that. Um, small businesses, stuff like that is what I'm imagining since there's a freight depot right there. Um, so that's just the kind of thing that I that I kind of had in my head. Um, and uh, just going through here and adding some more of these, uh, these catenary poles, um, which <laughs> they, they really are such a pain, but they, they just add such like a nice... Uh, aesthetic look to it. I really I love the way that it all looks and how they how they blend together and stuff like that and um, the type of visual uh, noise that that they kind of create in each scene. It, it's pretty it's pretty interesting to me. Um, back to this cobblestone texture, which which I like, and if you rotate it at just the right angle, you can get some some pretty cool effects. So bringing uh, some of the catenary in, catenary, not catenary, uh, just bringing it down the road, detailing the scene just a little tiny bit more. Um, bringing in some vegetation and stuff like that to just sort of complete the scene, I guess, a little tiny bit. Um, like I said, it was kind of tough. I was making stuff up as I was going along in here, but I was trying to picture how it all was going to blend together with this sort of river running right by this freight terminal. Like, I haven't looked at this this area on, on a map, like on Google Earth or anything like that, so I don't really know what the flow is. Uh, so this is really just sort of my creativity coming out. Uh, one thing that I have to keep thinking about when I'm doing this is the track height, and I, I think I mentioned this in the last episode. Um, when you lay the track down, it, it's technically floating on the ground, so you have to fix the height of the track to where it is and then bring the ground up, or use the, the height adjustment tool to bring the track down to, to the actual ground level. Uh, what I tend to do is is bring the ground up underneath the track, uh, and you could just use that, uh, do that with the, uh, the terrain tool, just bring it up like point, I think it's like point one oh or point one five. Uh, meters and just do the whole area and it'll bring up all your assets with it So hopefully nothing is is floating although I did notice when I was doing the cinematics for this and um, And for later episodes that there are some floating cars that I need to go back and and adjust which is really strange because there's certain times where You're looking at it, and I think it's the way that like the shadows are created from some of these assets that they look like they're on the ground But as soon as you start to kind of pan around and stuff like that they they're actually floating uh, it's very strange how this game kind of like sees where the, the ground is and how assets sometimes float and sometimes they don't float so um, Pretty weird, uh, but anyway uh, again just trying to my whole idea with bringing in um, You know doing more details is is adding more people and I want to add more and more people right now I'm just kind of like putting down the groundwork um, for for people and for some of these scenes and as I keep saying later on I'm gonna come back and and add more as I get some ideas because right now at some points I get a little bit stuck with what kind of details that I can add in because I wasn't alive during this period you know I don't know what what life was like and how things worked and you know things like that so I have to look at photos and photos can only you know they can only tell you so much especially black and white photos and um, you know you can't always get the angle that you want to see or the location that you want to see so um, it is a little bit difficult to try to come up with some of these some of these scenes. My mind sort of sticks in like, you know, modern times most of the time, because uh, that's what that's what I see every day, you know. Um, so actually, mentioning that on that on that point, um, I don't know if I'm gonna do another transition era build for a little while. I think um, I, I don't know. It's these these are really challenging and they're they're really great, man. And it's funny that I keep kind of falling into doing these transition era model railroad builds because. I always say, people always ask me like, 
if I like steam engines and stuff like that. And I really, I don't, I mean, I think they're cool and everything like that, but it's not like my thing. I, I like modern um, locomotives and diesel trains and stuff like that, but you know, steam isn't really my thing. But I end up constantly going back and modeling these transition era like scenes and, and model railroads and stuff like that. And it's just kind of funny how it's not my thing, but I keep doing it anyway. Um, but anyway, the scene is starting to come together here, this, this downtown uh, North Dayton area. Um, I like how it's sort of beginning to blend together and, and come to life. Uh, I, I've noticed that like once I put down some of these crash barriers, I think they're, they're listed as... Um, it starts to sort of like partition off certain areas and, and direct your eye, you know, around the scene and, and stuff like that. Uh, so I think that those are really important things to, to bring in there. It's power lines and, uh, and crash barriers and sidewalks are really, really great visual tools to, to lead the eye around and sort of add a little bit more visual, uh, visual noise to a scene and, uh, make it feel a little bit more complete. And we are going to come up to the cinematics in just a moment. So I would just like to take this moment to remind you that you should uh, hopefully drop a like on this video. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Um, once I hit 5,000 subscribers, I will do a giveaway. So if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Get me to 5,000 and I'm going to do a giveaway to make everybody happy, hopefully. Um, but that's going to do it for today's episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time in episode number four.